Dr. Jasmine, how the heck do I implement age appropriate consequences? Uh, like where do I even start with all of this? Um, well, if you have that same question, this video is exactly for you. I'm going to be breaking down. Okay. What is a consequence? What is a logical consequence? What is a natural consequence? <laughs> what is it? A, what is a positive and a negative consequence and how the heck do they all play in together? What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Jasmine. I'm a clinical psychologist and I'm also a mom of two little girls. And before we jump into, jump into this video, I wanted to share with you guys that I have some free live discipline workshops coming up very soon, January 23rd, 25th, and 27th at various times. Um, so you don't want to miss this live workshop. It's all about how to get your child to listen to you without resorting to yelling and all the other things that you hate doing as a parent um, so I'm gonna be breaking down you know why you have resorted to yelling from a psychological standpoint uh, what it's costing you um, I'm gonna be breaking down my success blueprint um, which is a framework that I've created um, to get parents more success feel more confident feel more equipped to handle all the demands of parenting um, and also build a better connection with their child because that's what this is all about right um, but also feeling more confident to handle all of the behavioral issues that might come up along the way and then I'll also be sharing a step-by-step -step guide on what to do in the moment to get better compliance so you're not going to want to miss this live workshop I'm also going to be opening the doors to my private community called the mom sisterhood which is a parent coaching community where you get access to me um, in coaching answering your questions I teach a new monthly master class all on different topics of parenting from tantrums and aggression to play to potty training to sibling aggression to discipline um, and we do monthly Q and A's and we have a great group of supportive active like-minded moms um, who are just awesome so I'm so excited to reopen the doors and um, I hope that you will be joining us um, when the doors reopen so I'll be talking about the my private community also in the workshop so I hope you're there I'll also be sharing it in my on my email list so make sure you're on my email list make sure you have signed up for the workshop the description will be down below in the description box or you can go to www.themompsychology just com forward slash workshop um, to save your seat again it's completely free so I can't wait to chat with you guys and connect with you guys um, without further ado though let's jump into this video so what I want to do is break down some key terms so what does it mean what is a logical and a natural consequence? So a natural consequence is things that happen naturally in the environment without our intervention, right? Um, so for example, if we lose our toys, well, the natural consequence is that we can't play with them anymore, right? If we go outside without our shoes, the natural consequence is that we might hurt our feet. Um, or if we don't study for a test, um, the natural consequence is that we might not get a good grade or the grade that we are hoping for, right? Um, if we're not nice to our peers, we might not have a lot of friends, right? So again, these are naturally things that occur um, after, you know, it's a natural consequence, right? Without us as parents having to intervene. Now, logical consequences, on the other hand, are things that require our intervention, right? They're the things that we as parents do to teach our child about the consequences of their choices uh, but the reason why it's called logical is because it makes sense with the behavior right a good consequence um, is ideally tied to the behavior at hand right so that there's a clear link right and helps them understand okay what happens if I make this choice then this consequence happens right but it's not meant to be punitive or emotionally or physically damaging that's really important right this is not punishment this is a logical consequence to help you understand the impact of your choices um, and again it's best if it matches whatever the behavior was so for instance a logical consequence for making a mess 
or throwing something is to go clean up your mess or go pick up whatever you threw. Um, that is a logical consequence and it, it's something I think should happen consistently, right? The natural or the logical thing that happens after we make a mess is that we clean it up. And I always tell my girls that, right? It's okay to make a mess, but we just have to go clean it up, right? So, so and and if they're throwing something the logical consequence is that they go pick it up right if they dropped something on the floor or they threw something intentionally whether it was intentional or by accident you go pick it up <laughs> so as long as they're a toddler and they can walk around they can go pick up things <laughs> that they drop and so you know we talk a lot about you know what do i do if my child's throwing things well, the logical consequence is when they're calm, of course, so this is going to be hard for them to follow through with this when they're still activated and they're still freaking out, essentially, and overwhelmed with their big emotions. But when they're calm, the logical consequence is that they go pick up whatever they dropped, okay? Another logical consequence for not listening during the nighttime routine, and maybe it takes longer, right? You're dilly-dallying, you're procrastinating, you're getting silly and goofy. And, you know, for whatever reason, the nighttime routine is taking longer and they're having trouble with listening. Well, the logical consequences is that um, they don't get as much time with whatever fun things are happening next. So, for, for, for example, in my family, um, we do bath, we do brushing their teeth, we do pajamas, and then they get a little bit of screen time before then we do the other set of bedtime routines like you know the snuggles and the um reading the book and all of that so the logical consequence is well you know um if you are you know having trouble doing this quickly then we won't get as much time for screen time that's okay it's not punitive they're not you know it's not a punishment or anything it's just what's naturally going to happen because we have to get to bed at a certain time and that's where the power of routines come in right because if you do everything in a very robotic routine like fashion this happens and then this happens and then this happens then they know oh okay I gotta get this done before I can go to the next thing so for example even before they get out of the bathtub and get their pajamas on and all of that and brush your teeth they have they know that they have to clean up their toys their bath toys put them in you know the little basket or the little um net uh um container <clears throat> before they can get out and that's just a very routine thing right so building routines and building chores if you want to call them or family contributions whatever you want to call them into the routine it, it works amazing right because again it's not something that is like sporadic or you need to go do it it's like hey this is what happens right we have to tuck in our toys we have to tell them good night we have to put them away so that we can play with them again you know next time or whatever however you want to explain it right but um again the logical consequence if they're getting silly and dilly dallying well, oh shucks, we don't have as much time for, for pet pet time and they understand that and they're like, oh, okay, I better hurry up. <laughs> I better get going, right, with all of that. Again, okay, so a logical consequence for aggressive behaviors would be that, you know, you have to turn away, you have to move away to protect your body. Again, it's not punitive, it's not to shame them, but it's a logical consequence because first and foremost, we always have to protect our bodies, right? And so if you're being aggressive towards me um, and you're hurting my body, I'm going to have to move away. And that's a very logical consequence. It's tied to the behavior. Um, now, in terms of positive consequence and a negative consequence, if you want to think about it this way, positive consequences are things that you do, do to teach your child that they're on the right track right so that could be as simple as a as a thank you thank you so much for um putting your toys away or thank you so much for listening right away that was super helpful now we can get going on whatever we're doing or it could be candy if you're choosing that route let's say if you're potty training um for example or it can be eye contact physical affection you know forms of positive attention uh verbal affirmations describing what you see and what you hear and what you like and are all forms of positive a positive consequence right 
or positive reinforce reinforcement, right? You're trying to increase the likelihood of a behavior happening by drawing more attention to it, okay? And then a negative consequence would be the things that you try to, or the things that you do to teach your child, oh, you're not on the right track with that, right? So there are different things that you could do, um, and that could be selective attention, which we are talking a lot about in my um, private parent coaching community, the sisterhood, the mom sisterhood, we're talking about, you know, what we call choosy attention and breaking that down and how we can use that in play and use that in real life to um, shape behavior. So it could be having selective attention. It could be removing um, a privilege like screen time or toys. Um, it could be timeouts. Um, it could be taking away things or stopping, you know, them from what they're doing. Um, it could be, you know, taking a break and going to another environment. All in a way to just try to help let them know, hey, we're not on the right track, but, you know, let's, I'll work, I'm going to work with you to get you <laughs> back on track, if you will. Now, you know, depending on who you talk to, there's different point of views when it comes to timeouts and removing privileges. I actually, from my point of view, my expertise and what I was trained in, um, timeouts and removing privileges is um, very, one, they're, they're hugely effective and if done intentionally and correctly, they do not hinder the parent-child relationship based on research. I will be doing a whole another video on that topic though, um, but you know, we're all coming at it from different angles and different perspectives, different opinions. So you might hear the word timeouts and remove our privileges and be like, oh, that's not a consequence I wanna do or something that I feel comfortable with, totally fine, right? Um, just letting you know sort of what, um, where I'm coming from and be on the lookout because I will be talking about timeouts and removing privileges in an upcoming video. So if you're inside my private parent coaching community, The Mom Sisterhood, then you have access to my guide. It's the ultimate guide to setting age appropriate consequences. So it breaks down more key terms. It breaks down how to implement a, con a consequence, um, what the process is behind that step by step. And then it also breaks down age appropriate consequences so i go through based on your child's age from infancy to age around nine or ten what are some appropriate consequences that you can give depending on their age because i know that that is a question that i get a lot of the time um and so i wanted to be sure you guys have that resource if you're not a part of the mom sisterhood don't worry doors are opening really really soon um and i hope that you join us it is an awesome community of such supportive and kind and just awesome moms um, who show up, share their wins, share what they're struggling with, get advice, get opinions, um, ask their questions to me. We have monthly coaching calls, Q&A calls. We have monthly classes. We have giveaways. We have expert workshops. I mean, we have it all. <laughs> so I hope you will join us when the doors reopen. They will be reopening on January 23rd. Um, so set your calendar make sure you're a part of my email list also I will be teaching a live discipline workshop on the 23rd the 25th and the 27th um, all about discipline and setting consequences so if you have more questions after watching this video be sure to join us for that live discipline workshop there will be um, a free bonus guide that I give away uh, during the workshop as well as Q&A and I'll be talking more about my sisterhood um, so I hope you will join us. It will be so much fun. You can visit themompsychologist.com forward slash workshop to save your free seat or there will be a link of course in the description box below as well if you want to sign up. I hope to see you there and until next time I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.